Hello, and welcome to a little ramble about Avania issue number three. I am Tristakov, or Tristan, whichever you know me as, and uh, I just want to share a little bit about uh, this third issue of Avania. Avania is a comic I've written and drawn for a number of years now, and you can read it for free on worldofavania.com, and also purchase the physical copies on Indie Planet. It was designed as a comic book, but uh, you can also get it digitally on Comixology, and that has all the, the covers and interior pages and, and artwork and nice high resolution if you prefer to read it digitally. Uh, but either one's good, and I just wanted to share some of what this, this comic looks like if you're reading the physical and, and talk about some of the creation process. So as you can see, it's in black and white, uh, but the interiors and cover, or interior covers and the covers themselves are, are printed in color. And this was one of my favorite uh, pinup illustrations. This was really setting the bar for how much detail I wanted, and I felt like I really captured Penrose's uh, role and Charlotte's uh, personalities and uh, their aesthetics in this uh, scene, and sort of their relationship with each other. And even though the pinups are standalone, they are sort of a... Uh, well, they are sort of in line with what happens around the events of the issue. So, like, the inspiration for this soon is telling Roll, who wasn't present in the second issue, what uh, what happened, how she and Charlotte were fighting the Osprey and goons. And also, just another thing, another reason that Roll wasn't in there was uh, Roll's one of my oldest characters, originally based on the Dragon Warrior Monsters, uh, Jamiris, back on the Game Boy Color. But uh, she's been a character I've drawn for a long time, and in order to fit the the uh, arrangement of, of species that are present in Avania, which is avians, equines, and hequivars, which are essentially like hippogriffs with uh, hooves and a beak, uh, in order to fit that, I had to adapt her. She was more of like a griffin. But um, yeah, once I did a big overhaul and figured out what her, her current incarnation looked like. She got into the comic too, and that was nice because uh, it's just such a long running character, and I've done some little retrospectives on all the drawing I've done over 20 years. You know, what, what our uh, design evolution was like. So anyway, we have the first page here, and this one, you'll notice I skipped the credits page as the first page of the comic because... Una's taking her friggin' sweet time in the bathroom. She's taking an eternity. I wonder if that's referring to anything. And this, this here, this big establishing shot of the markets in Freeport. Another one of my favorite scenes. We already had a single little bodega in the last issue, but this is looking down from the catwalk above the market's Freeport uh, station is converted from an old uh, carrier of some sort, and so it has these big cavernous interiors, which are now designed to host a big open-air market, or semi-open-air market. And I think it just looks really cool. And this was something I, I had a very rough, very rudimentary 3D scene for just to figure out like what the scale would be at the far end of the uh, market, but otherwise I didn't really model anything. This was just free-handed. And uh, as they walk around, I liked this, this shot here, just showing how massive these windows are. And, uh, another, another situation where you get to see a little more of the civilian side. We've got some Civilians in the background here are being distracted, and they're just running a, a simple errand up to the bowsprit to buy the fancy sandwiches for Morsley, and, well, Charles ends up getting one too, but anyway, look who happens to spot them, being one to always appreciate fancy breakfast. <clears throat> and then they come back to the hangar. Roll has a bit of a quick 
introduction, she'll have more of a role later. But, uh, focus. But that was her first appearance. Morsley complains. Luna gets butthurt. And they get ready for takeoff. And another big wide shot exiting the hangar here. I like the uh, big industrial beams and the and the catwalks on either side. And then another another quick exterior shot of Freeport as they take off. And then a few more once they're in the sky. This this is such a flat angle that this one just annoys me. But these pages are so much work. Sometimes I'm just like oh, screw. They just gotta get it done. And uh, yeah, that's that's just such a flat shot of that. It's not good. But these, the rest are good, and I like the, the reactions of the special police goons sitting in the brig, getting a real Black Lantern send-off. I guess the Black Lanterns are sending themselves off in this case, but a real uh, heartfelt goodbye. And then we cut back to the frontier, as Val and Varius and Eisern are getting ready for the day. A little bit of uh, focus on one of the rune spells Eisern's casting. This is maintaining their uh, perimeter so that they won't be seen or uh, detected or well, surprised by, by anyone on foot. Just sort of to focus on that, but not, not too much detail going into the magic. I've, I've talked about how their magic works in some of the ask posts, but uh, not yet focusing too much on the specifics in comic. So they're just discussing the uh, events, the message they intercepted in the first issue. They have a bit of a disagreement on how they should proceed, and Valen lays out his intentions. And then cut over to Frontier HQ itself. And one thing you, you'll notice, even though uh, this is developed for both uh, the digital format, which is one page at a time, either weekly or one page at a time, um, scrolling, if you're you know reading it on Comixology or something, I do try to plan how the pages, how the page layouts will work in print. So like this is a little two-page scene, and they get one whole spread. And then this is another two-page scene, and they get one whole spread. So I like how that works out. Uh, I tried to plan around it. It doesn't always work perfectly, but something to consider in either case, what will appear on the page and what is hidden until the next page, sort of uh, keeping some intrigue. And it's especially important for planning a web comic where these pages will come out once a week. But uh, even even just reading a comic, like what what you want to be hidden till the next page and thinking about uh, just the consistency of a scene, not having to sharp an interruption, although I have so many points of view, there are there are cuts, but they're separated by the page turn in this case. So anyway, Rick and uh, Max are digging out some uh, latrines here, and they learn a little bit about each other. I like these scenes. These are, uh, these are fun to do. Rick, being a wily guy, Manages to convince Max to take another bet. And then, back to Hans, later on at the fort. This is another. This is a case of where, okay, I, I couldn't quite uh, make everything fit neatly into single page spreads. So, I mean, uh, Hans is asking Beckenridge about some of the issues he had, what caused him to uh, be late in arriving. I really like this vertical shot, and this is kind of a cool different shot. Like, yeah, you get the horizontal uh, detail shot. This is sort of a neat vertical detail shot. And, uh, and I just like the, the poses and the less typical angle I, I used for that. Overall, I, I think this page composition is pretty good. But anyway, uh, Beckenridge starts to explain what happened, and this was a cool device that I liked having a uh, what is it, third-person omniscient flashback with the visuals, but the story is being told what Beckenridge's experience was, 
that night. But we can see there's a little bit more going on than what he was aware of. And all of these are just kind of cool uh, detail shots. And obviously you can see I changed the gutters entirely for this. Uh, I try to stay consistent with how I use the gutters. This is usually just a present, normal kind of situation. And the black gutters and the wibbly edges are uh, a nighttime flashback combination of effects. And originally the uh, this overlay, somebody just hit their accelerator outside. Oh, uh, this overlay here was meant to more be showing that it was a, a flashback rather than present. Because see, it's not oh, it's not over back and rich himself. But uh, it ended up fitting with the mood of the scene anyway, so I, I liked how that turned out. Especially with like, the light uh, from the flashlight there. And that continues on the next page. As you can see, the investigators didn't fare so well against Izern. But Beckenridge doesn't know that, so he just continues complaining. Anyway, uh, Beckenridge heads off to go back to work and leaves Hans to have another emo moment, which I like this little progression. And he sinks slower into his chair. But then Rick shows up to cause some shenanigans. Endlessly frustrating Hans, but showing off his cleverness. They uh, observe the engineers for a bit, and those are they're working hard, but Hans decides that Rick can't entirely get away with uh, shirking his punishment. So this is where I I, I kind of wish I had actually drawn them, uh, handing out the beers. But I didn't want to rearrange all the pages. There's just too many panels to uh, to rearrange and do. So I, that was that was a shortcut on this. I mean, I don't think it's like the worst, but uh, I could I could have had a panel of it being shown rather than just showing the empty cooler. This whole this whole scene was something I wrote for the first issue originally. Um, and I had the, the issue developed and even laid out very early on, but then I decided it was going too fast. I wanted to slow it down and show the characters in their respective situations for a little bit before they ended up um, disrupting their status quo and coming together as a result of, of orders. Uh, but this, this scene was really taken almost directly and added in uh, back here. And it ends up going on for a little while. Like, I, I don't dislike it, but it just, uh, it's a couple of pages where they're him and hawing about the incoming aircraft. And I think in and of itself it works fine, but it sort of uh, makes the tail end of this issue a little heavy and... I don't know, I feel like I could have done that a little better, but in and of itself, I like these scenes, and I like, uh, you know, Schmidt getting fed up with that, because they don't have a lot of functional equipment at Frontier HQ, so he goes to get the signal lamp so they can just friggin' communicate and figure out uh, who these aircraft are, because they're not expecting this arrival and not expecting that uh, livery on the aircraft, so they don't quite know who they are. And, uh, speaking of not knowing who they are, Rick's got a nice little reference here to another franchise I like a lot. <clears throat> and then, the, uh, the Black Lanterns start their, start their approach. And everyone gets panicked and, uh, runs inside for cover. So, this, I generally like this, this shot, but, uh, I probably would have posed Rick or Hans. I think Hans is fine, but pose Rick a little differently, because he's pretty similar to Hans's pose, and I think that's known as doubling when you have two characters with very similar poses, uh, right together. You know, like, put him on starting to run on the other leg, or, uh, just have his hands in 
a little more distinctly different position, because they are the two most prominent characters in this shot. But anyway, that's the uh, that's the end of, of this. And we cut to from the author with that nice Freeport scene. That was something I, I spent a long time on on all these details. Uh, so I just like to sort of show, sort of highlight that on the, the from the author. And I write the I write these from the authors usually when I finish the issue. So even though the first three issues were done much ahead of when I posted them. I think I finished that in like, I don't know, 2017, 2018? I guess it would have been 2018 because I started publishing as a webcomic uh, July 8th, 2018. And the third issue was the last one I wanted to hit uh, before I felt I'd be ready to publish. But anyway, I write the, the from the authors usually when I finish the issue, so it sort of reflects what I was feeling and how things went at the time. And uh, we got our little Avania Mail highlight here. And this one, this is a long, uh, long installment because uh, Hans talks in pretty good detail about all the equipment uh, used by the Avanian infantry and talks about some of their small arms and stuff. So very informative if you're interested in, in those details, but uh, you'll have to read that all on worldofavania.com slash mail. I have a list of all the different uh, Avania mail questions and answers, and uh, you can ask your own there if you have a question. And also just, if you want to read the webcomic, it's at worldofavania.com as well. So all this stuff is attached to that if you want to explore more. And we got the other Avania PX ad. You can buy posters, stickers, uh, little buttons, and... Whatever else I, I end up coming with, I haven't made any any new merch in a little while. But uh, if you just want to own something physical, the issues themselves aren't for sale there. You can buy those uh, as print on demand from Indie Planet. At some point, I may offer them there, but everything that's on the Avania PX, I have to fulfill myself, and I'm not really set up for doing bulk stuff. And my printer um, supplies Indie Planet directly anyway, so I just felt that made a lot more sense to get it shipped directly from them if you want to buy the issues. But, uh, got another high-detail pinup here, and this, this one, because I just like drawing Victoria and I'm crazy, I made at 600 DPI instead of 300, which normally 300 is, you know, it's a good size, and that's appropriate for this, and, um, Kablam prints at 300 specifically, so... I didn't really need to go over that. Some people like to do more. I like to draw stuff really detailed, so if I do it at 600 DPI, it gets crazy, and uh, I just spend way too much time on like all the little details, like stitching and making shading on every little friggin' fold of cloth, or you know, the the texture of the hair and everything. Or well, they're feathers in this case. They're all feathers, but they're very fine. Uh, hair-like feathers. It's all an excuse, but it's consistent. They are they are technically feathers. They're just very fine and can be styled in, in ways like, like human hair. <laughs> and something funny, right before I got the final print of this, I, uh, I did one last one. That I thought would be the last one. This is... Otherwise... Oh, wait, this... Yeah, this is... Otherwise, uh, I thought this would be fine... But look what happened, you know, I said I printed at 600 DPI. I forgot to change the DPI settings on the file to 300 DPI, and the pixel resolution was exactly the same. So when you look at it, you're like, oh yeah, that's super high res and looks great. But when they're setting it up for printing, the DPI and the um, physical dimensions and inches were really important to be precise and reflects the size of the page. And everything else is at 300 dpi, and uh, what the heck is this, 8.5 by, by 10? I, I forget the dimensions of my own comic, but it's a standard comic book size. But this page was twice that, and if you don't reformat it to the 300 dpi and the same dimensions as everything else, this is apparently the result. So my heart just sank when I saw that because it meant I had to do a whole nother one. Very simple, just change that out. But 
it's a long process to send files to the, the printer and have everything be updated and then get it in the mail and make sure that it all worked so that I know what uh, someone orders will be as I intend it to be. And then another in-universe ad instead of smokes, we got our drinks. So uh, crack open a nice cold Spuckenwerfer and enjoy the ball game. Uh, this is another in-universe ad that I uh, just had a lot of fun with. Old timey beer ads aren't that much different than modern beer ads. I mean, they have different cliches, I guess, but I mean, it's it's a beer ad. Like, they didn't evolve that much. Cigarette ads are funnier because uh, the views on smoking have changed a lot more than views on drinking beer. But nevertheless, that was fun to do. And this one's sort of uh, a combination of, of showing off. I like I like media in-universe because you have the media itself, this advertisement, which is amusing. But then you also have what is the advertisement showing in universe this is a bat ball game uh in Avania. so you see some of the civilian clothing styles you see what their sports uniforms look like you can see how their bleachers are set up you even have uh, an airship here at anchor in the background and then it goes a level deeper because you have what is the product labeling in the ad look like and this is uh you know historic aquilin monk brewing beer uh or, you know, perhaps the the romanticization of that historical figure or historical setting in the universe here. How the universe's present would portray their own past. So, a lot of stuff going on, and I like how uh, something as simple as a beer ad can demonstrate all this stuff on different levels uh, all at once. So that's something I find interesting about ads in general, but especially in fiction when you want to flesh out a setting and um, provide a lot of information without necessarily like having a super long-winded exposition dump or a uh, Wikipedia kind of article documenting it all. You can just you can infer a lot based on the details present in uh, a piece of in-universe advertising. So. Anyway, whew, that's the third issue of Avania, and I didn't really talk about the uh, the front cover, actually. This, uh, if you've seen the picture, you probably know the reference. Um, so anyway, I wanted to I wanted to do that, but it's based on a real photo. You can probably uh, look it up. And uh, uh, so yeah, it, it fits the fits the characters, and uh, I just like the aerial scene as the Black Lanterns are flying into Frontier HQ. And it's a much different cover concept from the, the first two, which are collage style, showing the different characters in what they were doing at the time, um, but sort of a composite image, whereas this could be seen as like a literal image if someone was actually off their starboard wing looking uh, at the cockpit. So anyway, you can you can read Avania at worldofavania.com as a webcomic. You can download it from Comixology and read the full issue uh, digitally, has all the pages. And also you can order physical copies at Indie Planet. And I'll put all the links in the description and uh, I hope you enjoyed this because this is something I really enjoy making and uh, I hope you enjoy reading it too. So thank you. <laughs>